Solid is an installation here on the campus of EPFL, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, Switzerland. Uh, it's situated at the Rolex Learning Center uh, and actually um, interacts with the building in a very interesting way. The word solid uh, means that you know, we have several parts in this word, sol, which stands for the sun. It's the sunlight that interacts with the piece to create this imagery of portraits and that's where the second part of the word ID for identity stands for. And then finally the actual pieces that comprise the installation are four solid metal plates. So we have the interaction of sunlight with these metal plates that creates the four portraits that we see. The scientific inquiry behind solid actually started out of pure curiosity. We wanted to understand you know, how does light interact with, with shapes, with form and I was always particularly intrigued by this phenomenon of caustics. Um, caustics appear everywhere in our daily lives. When, whenever, for example, the sun hits a glass object or a metal object, uh, we get these seemingly random patterns that are very intricate, very delicate, uh, and actually, if you have a dynamic surface like water, change over time. And this phenomenon, of course, is well understood in optics, but we were trying to look at a slightly different perspective here. Our goal was to take these seemingly random patterns uh, and see if we can modify the shape of the object that creates them to draw actual images, given images, in our case, these portraits. You know, what does the surface of a metal plate have to look like such that when light reflects off it, these portraits emerge? That was our, our question. And at the beginning of our research, it was not at all clear whether you know, there is a positive answer to this question. And uh, I remember very well when I saw the first results, um, we actually showed that this caustic design is possible. It was a very magical moment. It well surpassed what we had expected. And to this day, uh, I'm still amazed to see how well these, um, these algorithms work and how well these pieces work in practice. So the way the software works is first we have to find the configuration, the target configuration that we're going to use to generate these images. So what we need is we have a source of light, so this could be the sun, this could be a flashlight, and it's going to hit an object, which we call the generator, and it's going to be targeted at some kind of receiver. So this could be the wall, or in this case, the roof. Once we have these three objects, and we can specify exactly where they are in space, the software then changes the uh, the generator such that th that light coming from the source is going to be redirected onto the receiver. And the way it does that is it focuses light in certain areas, so it changes the surface like a lens so that it focuses the light in those bright areas, and in other places it, it changes the surface the other way so that the light spreads out and becomes darker in those areas. And in that way we can make any kind of image. For this installation, we created four uh, one by one meter uh, panels, which are made of solid aluminum. Um, so th this is a metal that we uh, that we machined uh, using very high precision uh, milling machines to recreate the three D shape that we computed. To make one of those panels, there is the first the milling step and then there is the polishing step. And the polishing is partly done with uh, such tool, which is a very fast rotating uh, cloth uh, that you that you place on the, the mirror and as it turns very fast uh, you smooth the, the plates. For this installation we worked with two architects uh, Dieter Dietz and Sunny Devabaktuni and uh, we really collaborated them very closely at the beginning to be able to say how the, exactly the configuration should be um, what is the most uh, aesthetically pleasing but also the most meaningful way of showing the portraits of the scientists as well as who the scientists and artists really should be. The people we picked were in some sense represent the diversity of um, the different fields of investigations here at EPFL. We have Alan Turing for math and computer science, um, we have Rachel Carson for biology and environmental studies, we have Marie Curie for chemistry and physics, and we have Aline Gray for architecture and design. And we also picked these people because they had to struggle throughout their careers. Um, their scientific careers were not always easy and straightforward. They had to fight against prejudice, um, and they had to overcome a lot of obstacles. They were not always, during their lifetime, in the spotlight 
um, of you know public opinion but they made some very very important contributions to the sciences that sometimes you know only became apparent after their death so we wanted to also acknowledge their struggle and their outstanding contributions um, at the same time represent sort of the active fields of science today at EPFL. Each, uh, each image is focused at the different time so uh, it's spread out throughout the year so that at least uh, whenever you come to see the, the installation you will see one image that's perfectly uh, in focus so it's not deformed. Um, so this was necessary in order for that if you come in winter uh, you can recognize at least one image because the sun is going to be very low so it's going to have a very different angle. This project is uh, actually supported by the Swiss National Science Foundation under a very special program called the Agora Grant. Um, the idea here is to, to bring science closer to the general public, to explain uh, what we do in our scientific work and to also, I think, get people excited and interested in this scientific research. The installation is a little bit about sharing that sense of wonder, to make people experience, you know, a little bit of the magic um, that is in this technology. So um, that's why we wanted to create something that people can come and visit and see and experience outside of the lab in the context of, you know, an everyday environment. And for me, the, the beauty of these pieces also lies in the fact that even though you know, sophisticated algorithms and advanced fabrication technology is necessary to produce them, the final result is actually pure physical form. You have the sun, you have a metal plate, and you have this uh, space and environment, and that is all you need to experience this very special effect. Uh, and I think that that is something that, you know, hopefully people will, will come and experience themselves because it's a very, um, it's a very spatial experience to be there, to interact with the pieces, to see the cores of the sun and of course to experience the change of the installation as the sun moves or as the different times of the years lead to different positions of the sun in the sky. And that's, that's something that uh, I hope people will, will experience themselves.